I'm Mike Bellevue, and today I'm coming to you from behind uh, the Chateau de Bellevue. And the reason for that is, as you might be able to guess from all the white around, is we were slammed two days ago with a pretty big nor'easter. And uh, we got off luckier than they did just a few miles from us, where they got 40 inches of snow, because we only got about 10 inches here. But that's still unusual for us a couple of weeks before Christmas. Uh, typically we would see snow like this starting about a month later. Now the bad thing for me is I was really counting on doing this video at Duelist Den. But once you get the big snows coming, Duelist Den gets inaccessible. Uh, and actually I could access it with four-wheel drive. It's impossible to get out of. So it may be closed for the season. Uh, if it keeps snowing like this. But we're going to come to you from behind the chateau because I did want to go over a few things with you. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. And today's subject will take us back to the 12th century, but um, it won't be dealing with swords. We're going to go smaller. We're going to talk about knives. We're going to talk about fighting knives. And we're going to talk about eating knives. So both of these knives were made by Todd Cutler. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Todd Cutler and his work. Uh, Todd is a well-known among the medieval and uh, renaissance community, well-known as a YouTube host. And he runs Todd's workshop where he custom builds medieval and renaissance weaponry and uh, researches medieval and renaissance weaponry uh, and uh, and he's just a whiz he makes beautiful stuff now Todd's workshop is the website where his high-end stuff is and we'll put that down below and then his less expensive stuff is in another site called Todd Cutler and that stuff is also beautiful but it's much more affordable and, you know, being just a poor knight myself, I'm no earl, uh, just a mic, I can't afford that Todd's Workshop stuff, beautiful as it is. But I can certainly afford the Todd Cutler stuff. And I've picked up a few things there recently that I wanted to share with you. Uh, so, just to give you a little idea of, of where you might have seen some of Todd's work, by the way, if you watch TV or the movies, uh, any kind of, uh, of action or fantasy movie, you're likely to see Todd's work. If you've seen uh, Netflix series The Witcher, Geralt, who is the, the lead character, both of his swords were made by Todd, the steel one and the silver one, uh, and they are beautiful. So. You know, check out Todd's stuff, but let's let's take a look at these swords in particular, or these knives in particular. And I'm going to do what I usually do with these. So I'll take each one in turn. We'll start off with the fighting knife, the dagger. And I'm going to talk about it as an object. And then I'll try to put it into its historical context. Okay, so next up, the dagger. So let's start off talking about this 12th century quill and dagger. And it's called a quill and dagger because the guard is a cross, just like a medieval sword. Uh, and those were eventually called quillins. In the 12th century they were not. It would have just been called the cross. But this is very sword-like in construction, and it's really one of the reasons I like it. So it's a double-edged dagger. Very pointy, made for stabbing, but it's got a serviceable edge for cutting. It's, uh, it's made of high carbon steel. It has a beveled disc pommel, a cross quillin. The hilt is hardwood, wrapped in cord, then covered in leather. Very serviceable, it feels excellent in the hand. And knives of this type continued to be used really from, oh, about the mid-11th century. Well, Todd says through the 17th century, but I'll tell you, 
except for the pommel. Uh, it's very much like the commando knives of World War II. So these things are still being used today. Very, very similar design. You gotta watch out if I go down here. The footing is fairly treacherous in all this snow. All right, so this is a fighting knife that's proved itself for over a thousand years now. Just excellent. Now, these knives, as I said, they were used by high status individuals and they were used in war and in self-defense, right? So the, the fact is that people of the knightly class, gentlemen, generally carried swords around with them when they traveled. I mean, they only went in full armor when you were going to war because that stuff is heavy and it's uncomfortable. But they often wore swords when traveling, uh, when in town, if it was allowed, there were periods in London, when wearing an armor and carrying a sword was deemed illegal, especially when guys like Richard II were a little bit concerned about keeping their thrones. Uh, and there were just times when it wasn't polite to wear a sword. I mean, when you were just wandering around the castle, <laughs> you know, in your bathrobe, uh, you would not always have a sword on, but quite often people would carry daggers with them uh, because it was a dangerous age. Well, there's no doubt about it. If you were in London in town, you know, visiting your favorite alehouse or whatever, well, getting home could be an adventure, right? So uh, having a dagger is a handy thing. Now, in warfare, daggers were used, I mean, throughout the period, and, and especially uh, you would find squires carrying them, that sort of thing. But as armor got better, daggers became more important. And the reason for that is because swords just couldn't hack through armor anymore. And eventually, swords became kind of useless as a battlefield weapon against armor. I mean, it went through quite an evolution of changes until finally, uh, the only real answer to armor was heavy pole arms and war hammers and, surprisingly enough, the little dagger. Because this guy... Once you got somebody off of their horse, or in the, the English doctrine, they're already on foot. Once you got them down, then you looked for gaps in the armor and sent this home, right? And uh, if you look at the Morgan Bible, there are many, and that, that would be in the 1200s, uh, there are many examples of daggers being used in combat in the illustrations. So as we go through medieval art, uh, you can see, as I said, lots of examples of all sorts of people carrying daggers. This was very common because, like I said, it was a dangerous time and uh, <laughs> people like to stay alive. Well, in the Morgan Bible, there are many combat illustrations. It's really an excellent source. And there are quite a few where you see soldiers, knights, wielding a dagger. And where do they most like to stick it? Right there in the eye. <laughs> you just see that constantly. Whether they're going into the eye slit in a helm, or if somebody's wearing just a Norman, you know, conical helmet with a nasal piece, they're still jamming it right into the eye. Wop, wop, wop. That's where they go. So, fairly brutal. And here are some examples of the old eyeball shot in period literature. But in lots of illustrations you'll see in plate armor where they're hunting out a gap in the plate, and boom, in it goes. And in this illustration, we see two knights that have obviously been hacking away at each other with swords and getting nowhere, except one knight has knocked the other one off his feet. And now that the, uh, the guy is down, he's got his dagger out, and he is going to put that in a gap, and that's going to be the end of our friend on the ground. Now, in this other illustration, you can see an enterprising fellow has got someone on the ground, and he's about to go in behind his leg armor and probably cut his femoral artery 
And that's going to be all she wrote for the guy on the ground. And that's uh, that's a typical use of daggers. I, I went to knife fighting school almost 30 years ago. And in that school, we were taught to hold the knife forward for the most part. And we were taught point down, slash, to use the edge, right? Around, point down, slash, to use the edge. Slash, 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 thrust. Okay, pretty simple. Now I noticed that in the, uh, the manuals, like Fiori di Battaglia, he mostly prefers a reverse grip, which is taught today. It's got some benefits. I mean, you would use it coming up and slash, down and slash, over and slash, right? But it doesn't give you the reach that the forward grip does. So it's kind of discouraged today, at least in the knife fighting school that I attended. I mean, there are some specific examples uh, where you can catch a good slash like this, where you might not have a good good room to come up like this, but it's pretty rare. I mean, mostly today we fight in this position, but in Fury's day, they mostly fought like that. Well, now moving to the Todd Cutler eating knife, which you see here, uh, and and this is a great knife. This is the sort of thing that most anybody would have owned. And uh, both of these knives, by the way, come with very nice sheaths. Uh, I chose the red leather. And uh, I also picked up this pouch, also from Todd Cutler. So uh, let's, let's take a look at the eating knife. Well, Todd calls this a low-status knife. Uh, it's made of high-carbon steel, holds an edge very well. It's, it's got a birch handle, and it has a um, kind of a sheet brass uh, pommel and bolster. And basically, it's just a general all-around utility knife. And this is the sort of thing that almost anybody would have had. When you look in the literature, you can see this being being used at dinner time by just about everybody. And not everybody would have carried a dagger, but everybody had to eat. So from royalty to uh, the middle class to the poorest peasants, you're going to find people with knives just like this. And uh, therefore, this is a very important part of your impression if you're going to be a medieval reenactor. Okay, well, this is where I have to apologize. Uh, I actually had an entire segment filmed on medieval dining practices. And, uh, and it was not really easy to get things set up in this snowdrift and, and film this. So I was pretty proud of myself for it. But as it turns out, when you're doing this stuff, sometimes you get so wrapped up in it, you don't really realize what's going on around you. And my neighbor... Uh, who I will leave unnamed, chose that time to get in there and try to shovel out some snow uh, in his walkway. And all the while I was doing this segment, he was shoveling snow that has basically frozen into ice. So it was incredibly loud. I didn't realize it while it was going on. But uh, you can hear it constantly while I'm doing my whole segment. And it's an incredible distraction. So ultimately, I had to scrap that. Um, so you don't get to see the eating knife in operation, unfortunately. But it's a beautiful knife, and as is the dagger. And they are not very expensive. And I'll have uh, links for them down below. So I apologize for this. And on a final note, should you happen to time travel back to the Middle Ages and you're having, uh, you're having dinner <laughs> with, let's say, the lord of the manor and uh, all, of, all of his retainers, um, don't feed the dogs. It's considered very impolite. Don't worry, they'll find something later on. So don't feed them no matter how much they beg. <laughs> 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, despite the uh, unexpected technical difficulties. Uh, we got a good look at a couple of beautiful knives made by Todd Cutler, and I really do hope that you enjoyed that. And if you did, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, we'll be having more medieval stuff coming up. I'm going to eventually be doing a video on the evolution of shields in the Middle Ages. I've got a number of swords backed up to do uh, that I've been wanting to do. And, uh, you know, while Duelist Den is snowed under, we'll try to find a better place for doing this than the, than the back of the Chateau Bellevue. But uh, we'll, we'll bring you some good content. We've got some cap and ball revolver content coming up in another week. So by all means, tune in, uh, subscribe. And if you want to support us on Patreon, we'll have the link below. That's fine. And if you want to see more content, uh, go to MikeBellevue.com. We've got all sorts of good stuff out there related to weapons, both edged weapons and uh, firearms, especially black powder stuff, muzzle loading. And in the meantime, we'll just see you next week. So bye and have a Merry Christmas. <laughs>